Hello, and welcome to 805 Focus, where you get the latest updates on all of our wonderful local nonprofits. My name is Greg Gorga, your host for today, filling in for the wonderful Cinder Sinclair. When I'm not sitting in this chair, I am the executive director of your Santa Barbara Maritime Museum. And with me today is Barbara Levy. She's the board treasurer of the Parkinson's Association of Santa Barbara. Barbara, welcome to 805. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Great to have you here. Okay. So a lot of people, uh, myself included, are not really fully aware of what is Parkinson's. Can you share with us what? Okay. Well, most people are, if they think of Parkinson, they mostly think of what we call the motor symptoms of Parkinson. First of all, it is a neurological disorder that affects the brain and, and the communication between the brain and, and your nerves and muscles. So uh, very often you'll associate Parkinson's with a shakiness of the hand, a hesitation in motion. People might want to see, if they want to go somewhere, but, but they, their legs won't work quite at first and then they get going. Um, and so various different motor symptoms. But, you know, they've found many other symptoms associated with Parkinson's. Um, the voice tends to get softer and there are some swallowing issues in more advanced cases of Parkinson's. So it, it, it affects everybody a little differently, too. And is there a certain uh, age it, you, you, it affects people, or is it all over, all over ages, all over cultures? It, it tends to uh, afflict people later in their life, maybe starting in the 60s and 70s. My husband himself got Parkinson when he was about 50. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, Michael J. Fox got it at a very early age too. The basic thing is that there's a, uh, a substance in your brain called the substantia nigra, and it, it gets depleted with age in everybody. But in people with Parkinson, it just gets depleted at a faster rate. So, okay. And so the uh, Parkinson's Association of Santa Barbara, what, what does your organization do? Okay, our main goal is to help people with Parkinson and those who care for them and their friends and family have the best possible quality of life with Parkinson's disease. So, um, you know, you may have Parkinson. We say we may have Parkinson, but Parkinson doesn't have you. In other words, you know, go ahead and, and live the best possible life that you can. We mm -hmm. encourage people to do that in, in different ways. So our organization in particular has three thrusts. Number one is our exercise program, because doctors have told us increasingly that the main, the one thing that's provides the greatest benefit to delaying the symptoms of Parkinson is exercise. Mm -hmm. So we have a chair-based exercise twice a week, one on Zoom and one in person. And we have um, support groups where mm -hmm. people with Parkinson can discuss their symptoms and share tips with one another. Mm -hmm. And there's also a caregiver support group where caregivers um, Give often, mutual support. You know, Parkinson involves the whole family very often. Yeah, so the caregivers are often family members, and so you're helping them. Right, right. And then we have educational programs. Once a month, we have a, a, a speaker, and uh, once a year, we have an all-day symposium that's well attended, and we tend to get some of the experts in Parkinson disease to talk to us on those occasions. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And then the monthly uh, educational program, is that available on Zoom as well, or is that in person? Um, we hope to get it in Zoom. When During the pandemic, we only had it in Zoom. Mm -hmm. We find they're, more, uh, they're better attended when we have it in person, but mm -hmm. we're working to get a capability to record. Because mm -hmm. we're finding that there's a lot of people at home who would like to avail themselves of our program, but mm -hmm. can't get out of the house. We even, we even have some people from uh, Florida and Minnesota participating in our support groups because one of the support groups is on, on Zoom and another is in person. Oh. But we, we stress the in-person aspect because socialization is very important for people with Parkinson also. Oh, wonderful. And yeah, I have to imagine those support groups are so 
uh, needed and so welcomed to the families yeah. uh, as, as much as the, the people going through Parkinson's. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I'm always impressed. I always feel good that we, we are able to help so many people, mm -hmm. and they tell us that we are. And so the exercise programs, so do you have various different types of exercise programs? No, we just have the one that's, um, it was started about 15 years ago by mm -hmm. Leslie Sack, who is a dance teacher in town. Mm -hmm. And one of her uh, clients over the years was a couple where, in which the man had Parkinson. And she had heard how good tango is for Parkinson's. And she, she got so interested, she developed a program of exercise and she studied with some movement disorder specialists on what kinds of movements are most beneficial to people with Parkinson's. So she has you know, put together a program that incorporates all the right movements to dance and it's a lot of fun. So you know, it's, people love that program. Oh, that's excellent. And, and now we have another person teaching one of the classes too, but pretty much along the same lines. Really? That is, mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. that helps um, mitigate the symptoms? And it, or, it just... Yeah, it does. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think my husband used to, he, my husband's had Parkinson's for a long time, and he used to say, um, I just feel stiff and, and I, I have to go out for a walk. Mm -hmm. And he felt better after that walk because that movement helps you just, you know, use it or lose it. And there's certain motions like crossing the body with your limbs is supposed to be beneficial. And then raise your arms and just, that also gets the circulation going too. And so that dance program incorporates all those different moves. Right, right. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's excellent. Is that how you got involved with the organization when your husband... Um, you know, when my, my husband was first diagnosed, we lived in New Jersey. And we got involved with the support group there. But he had a very slowly developing form of Parkinson's. So we we didn't need so much support at that time, but we did, did go to the support group enough to know how useful it was. Mm -hmm. And what practical tips that people with Parkinson give one another that the doctors don't always know about. So um, when we got here, we learned about the local organization. We joined it. So you're offering things through your association that you're not even actually getting advice from from the medical doctors sometimes. Oh, well, we get lots of helpful input from, from the physicians, and very often they come to our monthly speaker okay. meetings to, to talk about uh, various aspects of the disease. But I'm just saying I think that there's a lot of very practical t tips about living with Parkinson and dealing with some symptoms and people tend to, we can share them with the doctors too. Mm -hmm. but, but you're not normally gonna get that from a doctor because they're not dealing with it day to day like you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that's one. And mm -hmm. are all the services you provide free or you ch charge? Uh, we only ask for a $5 donation for participation in the exercise program. And we, we actually, we're a very small organization. We have mm -hmm. one part-time employee uh, mm -hmm. or uh, contractor who uh, is our administrator. But uh, we, we really get by on donations from people and we're very grateful for their support. Oh, wonderful. Um, and, and I think you've been around for a long time. Were you the first Parkinson's Association in the state of California? You know, we are a local organization. There mm -hmm. are several national organizations, mm -hmm. and I don't know how long they've been around. I think we are, have been here about 45 years. Wow. And we were started by one woman in town named Beverly Stewart, mm -hmm. and she was quite beloved, and she had Parkinson for a long time. And apparently, she was a real go-getter because uh, she, she decided she wanted to help people with Parkinson's. And she started the organization. She said, I want it to be local because I want to focus on what we can do for the people here. Mm -hmm. And she and her husband apparently went around to newly diagnosed people every Sunday and talked to them and about their, their journey ahead. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's got to be so comforting for those families and those people dealing with that, uh, to, to have somebody kind of been there before and, and had to work through that. Yeah, it's, that's our experience. Uh, that it seems to help to have someone who's been through it before, too. So one employee, you must rely heavily on volunteers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
So do you train your volunteers, and how does one get involved with the organization as a volunteer? Well, there's a, a lot of things that just are don't take special training, you know, for helping out with our events, uh, helping serve or bring uh, refreshments, uh, setting up the, 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 the place and taking down the place. We really could use a lot more help right now in, in audiovisual expertise. Because <laughs> like I mentioned to you before, we'd really like to be able to record some of our programs, but right now we don't have the technical know-how to, mm -hmm. to make that happen. And you have a physical location, where is that? We don't have an office. We hold our programs at the, most of the programs are held at the St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church on Ahe Drive. And we, we, just, we uh, rent a facility on the days of our program from them. But we don't have, otherwise have a physical location. So you do your uh, support groups there and your, uh, your exercise classes there? Yes, oh, nice. yes. Th those that aren't on Zoom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we do have, I should mention, we also wanted to reach out to the Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. And so a few years ago, with some funding from a generous member of our organization, she wanted to have more outreach to the Hispanic community. And she, she funded that program and uh, continues to support it. And we got a grant from the Parkinson Foundation for, for one year also. And that we have, it's an exercise program in, taught in Spanish. Oh, nice. And we have wonderful, very enthusiastic uh, Spanish speaker who's mm -hmm. a Zumba instructor, and uh, she's got a class going at the St. Andrews, I'm sorry, St. George Community Center on East Mason Drive. So that's every Thursday at 1, and uh, she's, that we're trying to, reach out to that community because we mm. felt like we weren't s serving them and of course they're they're suffering from Parkinson just like the rest of us. Sure, it affects everyone I'm sure. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, to become a volunteer for your organization you just go to the website and you can sign up there? Sure, sure. Um, it's mypasb, M-Y-P-A-S-B dot org and uh, yeah, we, we just renovated our website, so it's pretty nice. You can see our current activities, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, we've, we have volunteers who have trained through the Center for Successful Aging to be the moderators for our support groups, and that's very helpful. But uh, we also could use more board members to help uh, the business of running our organization. We're all, all, the, all the board members are, of course, volunteers. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Thank God for those board, board members. Oh, yeah. they, they make things happen, as do our volunteers, yeah. Yeah. right? Right. And so to financially support your organization, also go to the same website, which I think will be on the screen for yes. folks to see. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and, so, and that's a big need is, is the financial support right. of the organization. Right, 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 to yeah. help us continue to serve uh, people. As, mm -hmm. as you see, we, we, we don't have a membership fee. We don't uh, charge for our programs. Mm -hmm. For for the annual symposium, we do ask uh, we do have a fee to pay to cover the cost of the lunch because mm -hmm. they eat, eat lunch during the symposium. Yeah. But that but other than that, no. And do you have different types of support groups? Yes, yeah. So we have one support group for newly diagnosed individuals, or we, mm -hmm. what we call early stage uh, people with just the earliest symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And uh, another one is the caregiver support group. Mm -hmm. We have two of those. One meets in Zoom and one meets in person. And then we have a, um, well, it's, it, it's called transitions group. It's composed of people whose husbands have passed or whose spouses have passed away for Parkinson's. And then they find it useful to meet, to continue to meet. Many of them bonded as members of the support group while they were caring for their spouses, mm -hmm. and they want to continue to support one another. So we have that group as well. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So the whole gamut from beginning onset yeah. all the way through yeah. the yeah. passing. Yeah, and we find that with the early onset uh, support group, every, every time we meet, we tend to get one or two new people uh, and, and mm -hmm. you know, they're like, where do I begin? You know, mm -hmm. what doctors do I see? What medicine? How does this medicine affect you? 
and you know, everything, there's a lot of individual experiences with both the medicine and the symptoms. Mm -hmm. But just having people there to talk about it, and some will say, oh yeah, that bothers me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so many questions must come up, and just having people that have experienced these things yeah. before yeah. Uh, is, is a great resource. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, absolutely. And um, so the support groups, um, they, they, you, you, um, do you also have like a hotline, like people can answer original questions? No, but we find a lot of people uh, f call our, our, our phone, mm -hmm. and, and wh whoever calls in our phone, we do our best to get them to the right person or right help or right activity for them. And you don't have to be uh, affected uh, by Parkinson's to be a volunteer or be part of these. Oh, uh, no, and, and, no, no, yeah. just someone who cares. Anybody who wants to help right. in, the, in our right. community. Yeah. 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 So sometimes it's helpful to have volunteers at the exercise to make sure that the people are exercising in a safe manner. Mm -hmm. So you need volunteers at some of the exercise programs as well. Yeah, it would help, but yeah. you know we want to train them, of course. You want to, yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. you want everybody to be safe during right, that period. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And are you connected at all to the national organizations? Uh, no. 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 So, so I mean, many of us. Well, we, of course, yeah, benefit from <clears throat> uh, much of the literature that they give out and some of the research that they support. For example, the Michael J. Fox Foundation. His foundation has a website with a lot of very good information about it. Mm -hmm. And they have a monthly seminar that's online and the catalog of the previous sem uh, seminars is online. So if you have a particular question about one aspect of Parkinson's, you can go on to their website and, and listen to that program. They're very helpful. And of course, <clears throat> those organizations support research, mm -hmm. which is important. Sure. And uh, so as a local organization, we really do not have the means to support research, but many of us individually contribute to further research on a cure because they don't have a cure for it yet. So, so you're more looking, how do you cope with it on a day-to-day -day basis yeah, with yeah. your family, mm -hmm, your mm -hmm. caregivers, uh, versus mm -hmm. finding a cure? Yes, yeah. yeah. And so uh, any other programs besides the exercise and the support groups that uh, you're doing or that you want to do? Well, the educational programs. The educational yeah, seminars. Yeah. And yeah. we would like to expand our re re reach into the Hispanic community if we can. Uh, maybe have some more talks in Spanish mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you're looking for, to, to, for funding to, to help do that? Yeah, and, yeah. and actually person power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the big need is volunteers and, and the funding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, so how many people are affected by Parkinson's in our community? Do you have an idea of what that number is? You know, I think it's something like one... You know, I, I better not say. I haven't looked at that number recently. But you deal with a lot of people here in, the, in our community. Yeah, yeah. So, our, our, for example, our annual symposium attracts about 200 people. Mm -hmm. and, and probably, you know, many times that many have, have, are suffering from Parkinson's okay. in our community. And, and I would mention that. It affects more men than women on a kind of a two to one ratio. Really? Oh, wow, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Huh. All right. And what time of year is your symposium? It's in April. It's in April, so yeah. it's coming up? Yeah, All it right. is. Yeah. All right. So, well, thank you very much. Okay. It's well, you're welcome. Really wonderful to hear all about okay. it, the wonderful work you and your yeah, organization yeah. are doing. Yeah. Well, another way people can help is to, if you know of someone with Parkinson's, Encourage them to come because it's. I think the people who do come, I can see, are really benefiting from their attempt to help themselves. Yeah. 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 And, and, and they need that. Yeah. They need that help. Okay. Well, well thank, thank you. you. And thank you for joining 805 Focus. We hope to see you next time.